Welcome. My name is Tom Randolph. I'm director of the CGIR research program on livestock agri-food systems. Myself and my colleague John McDermott, director of another CRP, so CGIR research program on agriculture for nutrition and health, um, want to be, respond to the interest we've heard about what the CGIR has been doing in response to COVID-19 to support governments and our other stakeholders. In this presentation, we provide an overview of what we have been doing within a One Health perspective. The issue of, of COVID-19 is not new. And within the CG, we are on record for having predicted that a COVID-19 event was going to happen and was coming soon. Because of that, we have had a long history already of developing a research agenda that addresses how we could protect our food systems from an emerging disease event like COVID-19 and others. And in terms of protecting our food systems, that takes two dimensions. One is how do we reduce the public health risk of spillover events of emerging diseases being transmitted through our food systems, but also how do we avoid demonizing the market systems that the poor rely on. The CG has been responding with a research agenda to understand agriculture related to the drivers of emerging disease, designing and identifying better disease diagnostics, vaccines, and especially surveillance strategies technologies and strategies to strengthen biosecurity on farm and to improve food safety in market systems. All this work has had a focus on informal systems. Again, where the poor usually sell and buy the food they rely on. The challenge in these systems is that they're out of reach of regulation. And so the challenge is how do you design the incentives so that people will actually uh, comply and use these strategies and technologies. In doing this, we have been applying the One Health approach. This has already been deployed in, in our, the CG response and contribution to responding to bird flu back in the 2000s, to MERS, to swine flu, and the ongoing challenge of Rift Valley fever. In addition to looking at the technologies and strategies for how to respond to these and to, to, to both prevent them and then to control them better, we've also focused on the cross-sector institutional innovation that's required to make this type of response more cost-effective. We've done this within a One Health approach across sharing the, the agenda across both Agriculture for Nutrition and Health and the Livestock CRP. Because the One Health recognizes, as a, the graphic on the right shows, recognizes that our health is really the result of three sectors and the health in the human sector, the animal sector, and the environment sector. And in many cases, the solution to improving human health really lies in a, uh, controlling the disease or preventing the disease already in animal health or in environment health. Um, and the CG is uniquely positioned to be able to make the linkages across these three sectors. We can see how this works on the ground in Vietnam, where both CRPs have been working to make pork food systems safe. Starting from the right, we uh, have been doing work and with technologies and strategies to improve biosecurity on farm. And that extends to then training and introducing cutting board technologies in wet markets that reduce the risk of any diseases being spread from, those, from, from the pigs. And then even in small scale slaughterhouses, introducing simple technology that improves the hygiene. Also, we've been looking at the policy issue and being able to um, get support, providing the evidence that gets the investment to roll these 
strategies and technologies out throughout the country in Vietnam. And here you see a picture of the deputy prime minister announcing a major investment to do just that. Also importantly, in the graph on the left, we've been developing, generating the type of evidence that shows that web markets remain quite safe. And this shows a number of different bacterial uh, contamination levels. And it shows that the so-called modern supermarkets are actually less safe than the pork being sold in, in the traditional conventional wet markets. More immediately, we've been taking action to support governments uh, in, with respect to the COVID response. In Nairobi, Ilri has temporarily re repurposed uh, its laboratory so that it can process COVID-19 tests for the Kenyan Ministry of Health and is doing so. And the Ilri SIAT team is advising the Ethiopia Ministry of Health on pooled sampling and targeting methodologies that will reduce their cost and increase their test, testing efficiency. Hillary has also contributed his excess supercomputing power to model protein structures as uh, in the development of a, a vaccine. We've also been exploring opportunities to support rapid training of national lab technicians across the region in East Africa at our facility, uh, the Becca Hub in Nairobi. There is also our scientists are planning uh, currently planning a number of surveys to monitor the impact of COVID-19 on households and value chains. And we hope to capture the role, the important role that livestock assets plays, uh, play in strengthening the resilience of our households and communities, especially within uh, gender lens. And our researchers have also been directly advising various donors and international part partners um, as members of task force, et cetera, including the WHO. During this time, we're also establishing and consolidating our capacity to contribute even more. The CGIR established a, a hub in Nairobi for antimicrobial resistance, which is an insidious pandemic on horizon. It's also uh, just now in the process of establishing a One Health Center for Africa, uh, again in Nairobi. There should be in the next couple of weeks uh, a major announcement and presentation of a joint rapid assessment report, bringing in the environmental perspective in partnership with UNEP uh, that will again be based on the One Health approach. Turning it over to John. So what One Health lessons have we learned in the last four months with COVID-19? The main lesson is that food system disruptions and negative socioeconomic impacts under lockdowns are severe. Uh, in Nigeria, if free models estimate GDP declines 40%, and food systems are very disrupted, primary production down 15%, but food services by 90%. Finding ways to adapt social distancing measures that can balance the control of coronavirus transmission while allowing basic livelihood activities is critical. Health depends on both disease control and livelihoods. And daily livelihood activities can only fully resume if people are more confident that they are protected from COVID. To inform this health, food, and economic balancing, if pre-modelers are coordinating with infectious disease modelers at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine on global and country level analyses, A4NH has redeployed one of our research fellows to bring together data and model results between the two groups. The planned CGR COVID hub will then support links with national policymakers, bridging health, agriculture, and key economic sectors. 
The hub can also support cross CGR efforts to support national governments and partners as they adapt their policies and actions for COVID response. So then what are the One Health lessons for the recovery and building back better phases of COVID? There are two main pillars. The first builds on current work on One Health in the agricultural intensification of water, land and livestock. One area of concern is around intensification of rice production under irrigation in Africa. A4NH is working closely with Africa Rice on adapting rice production methods that limit mosquito populations. This is of particular concern to the health community as African mosquito populations seem particularly suited to acting as vectors for malaria and a potentially wide range of viruses, including Zika, chikungunya, and dengue. On livestock, you heard from Tom on the zoonoses risks associated with intensification of livestock production. A particular health concern is the intensification of pig production and their ability to amplify transmission of viruses from bats to people. Related to this, another major zoonoses emergence route is through bushmeat. B4 has investigated this and has worked with forest communities in livelihood-based approaches to managing risks of pathogen emergence. The second pillar is to embed One Health in the developing food system approaches of CGIR. The food system disruptions under COVID have exposed multiple fragilities in our food systems. A4NH, through its Food Systems for Healthier Diets flagship, has focused on knowledge and evidence for national food system transformation in four focus countries. In 2019, we engaged across CGIR in food systems mapping and started collective actions to support national food systems transformations. We base our work on the Committee of World Food Security Food System Framework and Guidelines, and these are used by many countries. Multiple One Health and Food System resources are available for use and are provided below. Thank you. <laughs>